second chapter, which is locomotion and support. So in this chapter, there are a few uh, important uh, outline that we need to know. First, we need to understand what is support, what is locomotion. We're going to see an aspect of human and also an aspect of animal. And we're going to appreciate some of the muscular system that we have in our body, what the body system of muscular system is important. And again, uh, comparable to human and animal, we're going to see support in plants also. So let's see the human skeletal system. As you can see in this diagram, so this is a complete uh, secretory, uh, not, sorry, this is skeletal system, which made of all the uh, axial, uh, uh, here we have the skull, we have the uh, ribs, and we have the, all the vert uh, vertebral column here, followed the rest are all the appendicular. So we have the uh, bone of the fingers here, which is uh, similar to the toes, uh, to the feet, which is carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges. So these are some of the bone. And we're going to uh, further look at one of the important, which is the vertebral column. So let's look at the vertebral column. So this is our backbone, and it can be divided into four parts here. The main one and the minor one is this last part. So we start with uh, the vertebral, which is called the cervical vertebrae, and we have seven vertebrae uh, of cervical vertebrae, followed by 12 thoracic vertebrae and five lumbar vertebrae. And finally, we have five uh, sacral vertebrae, which is called the sacrum. And finally, we have four uh, coccyx vertebrae, which is our tailbone. And we have also in between of these vertebrae, we have the disc, which is actually a uh, absorb the shocks and also uh, provide you with some, uh, reduce the friction in between these two bones. So we are seeing all these vertebral column. So we're gonna see some of the vertebral columns, what the specific characteristic are they having, some features. So in this case, you're gonna see the first uh, the cervical vertebrae. The important feature of cervical vertebrae is the transverse foramen. Transverse foramen is actually here. You can see as I'm at here, where transverse foramen gonna actually pass through all the blood vessels on the, all the nerves because they are located close to the brain. So we have all the nerves and the blood vessels coming from the uh, brain to all the part of the body. So we need to have this transverse foramen. So please identify transverse foramen to identify whether it's, a, it's, it's, it's what kind of vertebrae it is. It's a cervical or thoracic or lumbar. In this case, transverse foramen is for cervical vertebrae. The next case, we're going to see the thoracic vertebrae. Thoracic vertebrae will have something called a spinous process. So spinous process is over here. So why is spinous process is longer in case of thoracic? Because they have to attach or articulate with the ribs. So we have the ribs and need to be connected to the backbone. So this spinous process is going to do all the function for connection with the ribs. So please look at the spinous process. Uh, it's quite long, then that's belong to thoracic vertebrae. In case of uh, lumbar uh, vertebrae, they have a large centrum. So the centrum is comparably big compared to all these other vertebrates because they have a larger centrum because we're going to put most of our weight on top of this lumbar because we're going to, our body is supporting our, our backbone is body, uh, supporting this. So all the uh, weight are going to be put on this lumbar vertebrae. So we need to have a good uh, support. That's why they have larger centrum. Enough with the uh, bone. So we're going to see some of the muscles. So we already start with the uh, heart muscle that we see previously. So heart is made up of something called the cardiac muscle. So cardiac muscle is the one important because this cardiac muscle can contract and relax. All these processes are taking place at the uh, muscles, uh, the, the cell level of a cardiac muscles. Okay, and we do have something called the skeletal muscle cells, so which is responsible for all the muscles in your body. So they are made of, of muscle fibers. And this muscle fiber uh, can be seen like cylindrical. If you open up these muscles, we can see all the cylindrical uh, cells and all of these are containing a nucleus, which is uh, human cells. And further, if we cut open these single uh, cylindrical cells, we can see something called myofibrils. Uh, so all these things inside here, further, if we zoom, we can see that each of these myofibrils contain our protein filaments, which are known as the actin and myosin. Because of this interaction, resulting in this contraction of muscles. And the last muscle will be the smooth muscle, which you have in your lining of your example here is your stomach. So stomach will have two smooth muscles. And skeletal are more in your other muscles and specifically cardiac muscles are in your heart. So these are a few other muscles that we have in our body. So particularly in this chapter, we're gonna see most on this uh, skeletal muscle comparable to cardiac and smooth. So let's see how 
our muscles are able to be actually working. So if the muscles are able to work because one need to uh, contract, one need to relax. If both muscles contract and both muscles relax at the same time, there won't be any movement. So this process of one contract and one relax is called the antagonistic, so all opposite of muscle working together. So example, if you want to bend your muscle here, your hand, your forearm. So bicep will be basically contracted. You can see like basically it squeeze up and your tricep is behind here. It's basically relaxed. It's, you can see it's quite long. When this process takes place, you can basically uh, pull your arm up because, you're, because of this uh, contraction here and relaxation here. And in a comparison, when you want to straight your uh, forearm, one need to be relaxed and one need to be contracted. In this case, since these muscles are, 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 are attached to this ulna, which is responsible to straighten your arm, so these need to be contracted and bicep need to be relaxed. So each, uh, each contraction and relaxation will produce different kind of action, different kind of uh, muscle uh, position. So these are called the antagonistic muscle. So these are very basic that you can see that all muscles need to contract and relax and they can happen at the same time. So this is for the human. So we're going to see uh, one of the organisms, which is the earthworm. So in this case of earthworm, they do not have muscles like human, like triceps and biceps, but they have different kind of muscles, which are called the circular muscles and also longitudinal muscles. And they work similar like antagonistic, when one need to relax, one need to uh, contract, and they produce a peristalsic movement. So basically contract, relax, contract, relax, contract, relax. So first let's look at this numbering and we can just go on with this uh, mechanism. So in this case, you can see this is the longitudinal quite close here and they're contracted. That's why it's close. And you can see these muscles are quite relaxed. So in this case, become shorter and thicker. So first we have this uh, muscle contracted and relaxed at this place. And we, we do have some kind of uh, projection here below. It looks like a lake, but it's not a lake. It's called kita. Kita is basically something kind of like a, a food kind of which can anchor to this ground so that they can move and they can go on to the next stage. So the next process is, one, first we saw the longitudinal contract. Now is, if you want to move forward, okay, the earthworm need to move forward, the circular will now be contracted and the longitudinal will be relaxed. So in this case, from this position, it's going to move to the next position. And kita will now move from, I uh, mean, will, will release here and will just going to go and uh, anchor at the next. So first it was in the anterior, in the front part of the uh, earthworm. Now the kita is at the posterior, anchoring at it. So because of these continuous processes of anchoring at the posterior and the anterior, the front and the back, uh, contract and relaxation of this longitudinal and circular, so this earthworm first at one stage can move to the next stage and you can see it move and it move quite slowly in this case of this uh, peristalsic wave. So this is an example of an uh, earthworm. So next is we are seeing another uh, organism which is a grasshopper. So in this case grasshopper are quite uh, fortunate in the sense they can go quite faster. So they have something called a flexor muscle and also extensor muscle. So in this way, they're going to form something called a flexing muscle where the hind leg are folded into a Z shape. So you can see a Z here. So when muscle here are contracted, basically they are ready to jump. When they want to jump, so another muscle needs to be contracted, which is the extensor. Since they are extending forward, the extensor needs to be contracted. When this extension happens, the, the leg is going to go forward. And basically, they're going to go into the air and jump and finally reach to another position. So you can see some extensor and we can see this flexor. And exoskeleton is basically having a, a, a skeleton which is outside the body, not like human. We have uh, endoskeleton. So this continuous process of uh, muscle, uh, flexor muscle contract and extensor muscle contract will cause the grasshopper to move forward. So we have another uh, organism here, which is the fish. In a sense, fish can do a lot of uh, movement here. So either they can do uh, yawing, they can do, go to the left and right, and they can roll, or uh, they can pitch in sense go up and down. So since uh, fish are in the water, they need to do a lot of swimming. So they need to have a lot of a problem being in the water. So what the adaptive feature they have in uh, fishes are, example, they have streamlined body. They are like aerodynamic. They are very sleek. So they are very uh, able to like penetrate through the water uh, surface, like water uh, pressure. They have the scales which can go uh, backward. 
so they can actually control the movement of it. Then slimy control, obviously, this is slimy and then less friction for it. And they have flexible vertebral columns, so their, their backbone is quite uh, flexible enough because of the uh, some muscles here, which is called the myoto muscles. When it wants to move it to the left, the, 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 the one side of it going to work. If it's going to be movement to another side, the another muscle. So movement of these going to cause the fish to go left and right. So they have also some kind of, of a swim bladder. We maintain it to be buoyancy in the water, so it not, not sink into the water uh, pressure. So these are some of the adaptive feature the fish is able to uh, live into the uh, water and the resistance to go through this. So we see all the organism of human and uh, animals. So next we're gonna see some of the adaptation for the plants. So we have aquatic and also terrestrial. So first we see some of the aquatic uh, uh, plants, either they are submerged in the water, or either they are float in the water, terrestrial mostly on the land. So let's look at the submerged plants. Example is hydrilla. So hydrilla, they are living in the water itself. So how they can live in the water because they have has sex, so they keep it uh, afloat and also buoyancy to support so they can just basically be in the water without any problem and as the water go it can just go to one place to another one so another one is we have a floating uh, plants that's on surface of the water it's called example nymphia they have another tissue which is called the aranchyma which is uh, the stems and the leaf are provided with buoyancy so they're able to float uh, float on the water and can go to another place so these are some of the submerged and floating examples. So let's look at the terrestrial plant. We have herbaceous plant, for example, as in case of banana. Banana do not have a woody plant, uh, and other plant like durian trees are also all having woody plants. So in this case, they have uh, important, which is uh, maintaining for herbaceous plant is basically on parenchyma and colenchyma. So uh, to maintain the structure of it, since they are not woody. In case of a woody structure, for like example, a durian tree, uh, we already see something called xylem which is important for transport of water, and we also have a sclerenchyma, and which all the supports of tissue will provide uh, uh, support and strengthen the uh, terrestrial plants. So to recap what we have studied in lo locomotion and support, we have so saw all these humans and animal. We saw our supports are basically by either uh, outside skeleton uh, or inside skeleton. For in case of hydrostatic skeleton, we can see in earthworms. Locomotion is basically about movement. We see how humans, we have all the joints, we have all the muscles, we have tendons and all the ligaments. Ligaments basically between bone and bone. Tendons are between the bone and the muscles. So we do have joints like hinge joints, basically like 90 degrees. Ball and sockets are 360 degrees movement. And we have animals with uh, earthworms. We can have longitudinal and circular muscles. Grasshopper, we have the flexor and extensor. And fish, we have the, all the myotomes that's responsible for this. And for plants, we have the aquatic and we have terrestrial. And all the aranchyma is important for aquatic. For woody plant, we have sclerenchyma and xylem. And for herbaceous, we have the uh, colenchyma for that. To maintain our uh, muscular skeletal, we have to give a good care of it. We must uh, wear proper attire. If you are uh, lifting something heavy, so make sure you have a good posture. Take a balanced diet. Example, more of calcium and more of vitamin D is required. Uh, practice is always important. Uh, so safe exercise techniques is important. So when you're having a vigorous exercise, please take note of your uh, posture and structure. So let's see an example of a question regarding a joint. So we have a bone in upper and lower part. And so the next question is, can you please describe uh, two joints that you can see in her human and see, give an example of it. So I already told you they have hinge joint, example elbow, because it moved 90 degrees up and down. And ball and socket, we can see our shoulder because it can move 360. So these are example of the joints that we can see in human. Okay, a uh, movement of joint cannot take place without muscle, obviously, because muscle is attached to the bone and through the tendon, and muscle contract will produce a movement. So Without a muscle, a bone can't move. Without a um, uh, bone, muscle can't do as action also. And we will sing about something called antagonistic muscle. Because muscle can't push, it can only pull. So muscle need to extend from original position. So one muscle contract, another must relax. Then vice versa for an action to take place. So this is about uh, a typical musculoskeletal question that can uh, be in your exam. So this is on your vertebral column. So we have our, our backbone here. And the next question is to identify what is X and Y. I already give you some clue where to look for when you wanted to answer this question. So 
the question is what is x so x is basically uh, lumbar vertebrae because of the presence of the centrum. Centrum is quite big. And where is it located? It's located at 20 to 24 uh, vertebrae column. An example of why, then why, what, what's the what, uh, y vertebrae going to look like? So please look at the uh, key here. We can see there's a uh, foramen here. And this will indicate that this is a cervical vertebrae. And cervical is more closer to the brain. So it's more to the third to the seventh vertebrae. So let's see uh, what is the important part of vertebrae in the body movement. So we can see that uh, muscles are attached. So when vertebrae are moving, so we can see some flexibility. So vertebrae are quite flexible in the sense that it can provide muscles and muscles can move. So next question is asking about what is the importance of thoracic vertebrae. We have thoracic vertebrae that is actually attaching to the ribs. So when there's a rib, so we can actually can see the upward movement when you breathe in. So the, up, uh, the rib go up when you breathe out, then it's go down. So this is because of the rib is being attached to the vertebral column. So this is uh, similar. We can see the question is asking is similar of antagonistic muscles. So this is particularly looking to a hip joint. So we have our hip. So the question asks you to label a few parts here. So we can see the white part here is referring to the cartilage. And B is actually a bone. In this case, because it's a hip joint, we can see our femur bone here. And we also have the, uh, in between the yellow color part is the synovial fluid. So the, que uh, the question asks, what's the function of the cartilage? Obviously to cushion the joint, to absorb the shock. And for synovial fluid, it's mostly because they are fluid in nature. They are providing the lubricant and they will be reducing the friction between the bone. So this bone and this bone will be no friction. And basically, uh, there will be no damages for the bone. So there will be another disorder, which is called the osteoarthritis. Osteo means the bone and arthritis is basically referring to the joint. So this particularly can be seen in elderly group. Uh, so your grandfather and grandmother basically can be affected with osteoarthritis in this case. So with the reference of the diagram, what can happen in the osteoarthritis, we can see this cartilage that is in white color slowly, slowly become thinner uh, as, as how normally it look like. And bones, because of this become, they are very like fragile, they are very uh, porous in this case, so basically it become damaged. And finally, because of this osteoarthritis, the fluid inside slowly and slowly will be reduced and there'll be a lot of friction going to take place. And this whole situation can result in osteoarthritis. So for example, our plan we have like here, P, Q, R, and S. So we're going to see what this P, Q, R, and S. Obviously, P is something called uh, it's already floating on top of the water and Q is obviously a terrestrial uh, plant and R is floating on top of water and S uh, is, is in the water, so it's submerged into the, into the water. So in this case of how R is able to be on the uh, water surface, so arenchyma tissue able to keep it uh, float on the water because it provides buoyancy. An example of S because they have um, air sacs to keep the plant float on the water as well. So in this case of uh, P, P is an herbaceous plant. So they can live on the, uh, on the uh, land in this case because of the parenchyma and colenchyma providing the support. And they have a, a thick cell wall that made of cellulose and pectin. And we're coming to uh, our Q plant, which is the terrestrial organism. So the uh, plant, so they have sclerenchyma and also xylem. So xylem is uh, made of lignin, which is quite thick. So they are able to provide support. Uh, in this case of like um, um, other plants, so this is submerged, so they are not made of sky and or xylem.